It's the most wonderful time of the year. The breakdown. Merry right Christmas. Now. Merry Christmas, y'all. Good evening. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Seasons greetings. Merry Christmas. All of those good things. Feliz Navidad. Uh, it's the breakdown and I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson and we are doing our special holiday edition. Festive yeah. as always. Rick, I'm digging the hat. As you could tell, the, hat, the, is, over the, the hat is working for me tonight at a level. I'm sure the internet is going to have plenty of fun with the hat, but <laughs> fuck y'all Grinches. <laughs> exactly. Um, there is no- It may not Grinches. last much longer because it's hot. As, oh. like, it's like wearing lava on my head. <laughs> oh my God. That's why I have on my little um, sparkly snowflakes because you I- You are very snowflakes. festive. You are extremely Thank you. festive. Thank you. My shirt actually says, let's get elfed up. Um, you can't <laughs> see, but yes, uh, <laughs> we had a we had a Christmas party over the weekend here at, at our house and um, it was quite the time. And that was the theme. We had a backdrop and everything. I posted some pictures on, on Instagram, but it's, um, you know, it's the most wonderful time of the year and we like to do it up around here. Um, but there's still news. So there's things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk some news a little bit uh, at the top of the show. Then we're going to get into some some uh, lighter topics as the show goes on. So stay tuned for that. We have some pictures of, of different things, uh, festive for Rick's house, from my house, and lots of content to go through tonight on the show. Yes, we are. Lots of things, because despite the fact it's the most wonderful time of the year, it's also, you know, the crazy doesn't stop. The crazy continues. And we have last week in the Republican Party, of course, the last one of the year, before we do the, the roundup, which will be at the end of the year. But for That's tonight, the one. last weekly, last week in the Republican Party of 2023. Roll it. This is your favorite president, Donald J. Trump. The issue with Taylor Swift is that she makes women hate every everyone i like uh big burly fighters with beards i got one in my house let me tell you the biden regime can i say that the phrase cucked husbands is the best hey can you send a message to my friend bin laden uh he's still really much alive even though you all like uh, just no she got she is, four million girls registered in like 24 yeah, hours you see that she but it broke the website that's the thing it's so easy She's for gonna her destroy to destroy the that. country she will mail you a beautiful trading card it is an authentic piece of the suit I wore when I took that now famous mugshot. Wait, are, so you, I'm offended. are you white? My mother was. Oh, wait, you're biracial? Is that a thing? I had no idea! I will have made more money in um, seven days than I would have made an entire year in Congress. And it was a great suit, believe me, a really good suit. It's all cut up and you're gonna get a piece of it. Gavin Newsom canceled Christmas. But why? I love that you are such a dedicated student at NYU. You know, um, <laughs> my not-so-real MBA. You don't want to run against Ron DeSanctimonious with his high heels and his bobblehead bullshit, you know. I wish I looked as good as I do on those cards. That I can tell you. They give me muscles where, believe me, I don't have them. How long until... Uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are no more. Over under, Blake. Like until they're dead? I, I can see their suicide no, no, pact no, taking no, effect. No, not that it. one. I'm so proud of you for coming out as a furry and they're all excited about your fursona. A beaver puss, a beaver and a platter puss. I want to be a dictator. I didn't say that. I said I want to be a dictator for one day. And does anybody think Trump's organized enough to be a dictator? And do dictators even play golf? Go right now and collect your own exclusive piece of American history, and we'll all have fun together. Have a good life. <laughs> have a good life sounds strangely valedictory, like... He's going up to the comet now and disappearing forever. If only, if we were only that lucky. I mean, can we just talk about Santos for a second? The last sure. time we were on the show was the day he got kicked out of Congress. And yeah. um, he's out now. And this freaking cameo thing, 
is just, it's so apropos for where we are right now. So, so perfectly. It, Tara, it captures this moment of superficiality and, and, and prankishness and weirdness and, and just like the mendacity of this guy to now be pranked into doing stupid cameos. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's so chef's kiss. I can't even see straight. I mean, it's for, for money. And I understand in the beginning, people were just doing it to troll him, but they were, at, but they're, but he's getting paid to do it. You're paying money. It was like a couple hundred dollars for those stupid cameo yeah. messages. For those who don't know what cameo is, it's this service where like celebrities or people, influencers, whomever, you can sign in and pay them whatever rate they set to send a message to someone in their own, you know, their own like quirky way. So whoever, whatever, like Rudy Giuliani was doing them. It's, and it's not just a right wing thing. I mean, it's like all kinds of celebrities do this right? and you get paid for it. And like Santos started off doing them at $75 for, I think they're a minute long, 60 seconds. They're up $500 now. $500 to pay for this chooch to say Listen, listen the, 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 the trajectory of Santos, though, is at some point the lure of cameo will fade and OnlyFans will call his name. Oh, I don't. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Okay, I can't. I don't want to imagine You're that. just so wonderland. No, no. Well, you know, maybe he'll have to resurrect Katara. I'm, I think she'll make more money. Probably. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, he's free now. Um so speaking of the crazy Capitol Hill, this week, it, there was a lot. There was a oh, lot of chaos on Cap Capitol Hill this week. And I can remember when I was a Hill staffer, this time of year, the only crazy thing that would happen would maybe be a funding bill. That's sure. about where it ended. Because everybody's checked out by now. Everybody's looking forward to the new, you know, the new year, going on recess for a couple weeks. And you might have a funding bill or two argument. Uh, one year we had the, the in 2011, there was an almost government shutdown thing where people had to come back like the day before Christmas. But that that's it. No, not this week. Not this Congress. No. This, is, this has been the most chaotic year for Congress ever. Started off, it, it ended the way it started off, in chaos. 15 rounds of Kevin McCarthy to become Speaker. Ending the year with Kevin McCarthy leaving Congress in disgrace, embarrassed with his tail between the le his, his legs. And today he gave his goodbye speech on the floor. And that's just to cap off all the other crazy. But I think we should, we should give our ode to Kevin McCarthy's departure from Congress right now. Pour one out for Kevin. Yeah, pour one out. No, I'm not going to waste it on him. No, He's not me. Run it. Goodbye, Kevin. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. You all know Matt Gates. You know it was personal. One of the uh, greatest acts of heresy that I've seen uh, in a while. Was un I thought it was unfair to, un unfair to Kevin. Nothing like this ever happened when Nancy Pelosi was in charge. And Very I think clear. it's disgraceful, and I hope they expel him from the conference. Uh, I think there needs to be a reckoning uh, within the conference. It's an astonishingly destructive behavior by a handful of egocentric people. I have never seen anything so malicious. Those eight people were anarchists and they're Chaos Caucus members. You're gonna get a week or 10 days of the media focusing on Republican disarray. The Republican Party today just can't govern. Nancy Pelosi with a five vote majority, she was able to govern. The Democrats have become the party of discipline and the Republicans have become the party that lacks discipline. I, I'm a conservative, I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative one gets things done. You, you don't surrender. <laughs> you know, you know, the greatest thing today that came out of it was he then made this announcement somewhere, I saw it somewhere on social today, where he said, uh, I'm going to go into, uh, I'm going to go into a, a work with Silicon Valley to do AI regulation, I'm thinking, oh God. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the Terminators might as well just show up now and kill us all if Kevin's <laughs> going to do AI regulation. Right. Kevin's going to go work for Skynet. Good right. luck. You know, this Cyberdyne 9000 may kill us all, but here's a pep check. <laughs> <laughs> well, rest in peace to the Young Guns officially. 
Um, R.I.P. R.I.P. For those who don't know, the Young Guns were the three congressmen, uh, Paul Ryan, Eric Cantor, and Kevin McCarthy. Yep. Who Ten years ago, were supposed to be the future of the Republican Party. The first one to get knocked off was Eric Cantor when he lost to Dave Bratt in a primary upset in uh, Virginia, uh, part of the Tea Party wave. And then, obviously, Paul Ryan decided to leave Congress uh, after being Speaker of the House and said, fuck this shit, I'm not putting up with this I'm anymore. Out. I'm out, deuces. And um, Kevin McCarthy was the last man standing and he went out in disgrace. So, yeah, it's uh, it's officially the end of an era. All, all the, And the predicate, everybody, of the young guns was they were going to reform the Republican Party. It was going to be younger, more yep. able to talk to a diverse coalition of voters. It was going to focus on economic opportunity and not the yep. social culture wars. Yep. And and if they would if they had done that, if they'd actually pulled that off, you would not probably have ended up with Donald Trump. We wouldn't but be here. This the lore of the culture war crap. Yep. Well we wouldn't be here now if they had followed that that playbook. And we would not be here right now. Mitt Romney would have won and it would have been a whole different world. But here we are. Right well, here now. we are. But here we are. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why we're drinking. Um, speaking of Paul Ryan, and, um, I, you know, I always liked Paul Ryan, and I was so disappointed in him when he went over to Fox and cashed out and didn't really say much during the rest of the years of, of Trump and yep. all the crazy. And, you know, I was like, come on, Paul, because I know, I know Paul Ryan sure. feels the way we do. He sure. was, you know, I'm sure he's horrified at where the Republican Party is. And, you know, I guess it's better late than never. You did a video today about this. Paul Ryan mm -hmm. had a ha, was on a, uh, I guess, somebody's podcast. Yeah. And and he actually called Trump a author, an authoritarian narcissist. Nar oh, he went he went Rick Wilson level hammer yeah. and tongs on the guy. Yes. Which I, I mean, was, it was like, merciless. I was here for it. Honestly, I was. 100%. I was here for it. Because you know what? Listen, we need all all hands on deck here. And if the it's not like it's going to matter to the MAGAs, but it matters to those middle of the road people, those Republicans who need a permission structure to reject Trump. Those are the people we target most of the time. Yep. Those people, those Bannon line people, we refer to them all the time. They're the gettable Republicans to convince them like, right. God, like we can't have this Trump thing again. We cannot. I don't give a shit if you thought the economy was better under him or you got tax cuts. Like the democracy's on the line. So I, I'm I'm glad to see that Paul Ryan came out, and I I hope he consistently does do that. Um, he praised Liz Cheney for her for her uh, courage and Adam Kinzinger, you know, the only ones, and how it cost yep. them their careers to speak out. And um, he wasn't wrong. No, he's not wrong. And Liz Cheney's out here on her book tour, just just tearing it up and being honest. And you know who else? Last since the last time we were on, there was another one of those Republican debates, if that's what you want to call it, where you know Chris Christie, I think, won the debate, and because he was the only one that was straight up honest about what's at stake, what Donald Trump, what he represents, and what, what a danger he is. And I think we should remind people because it's all in the same vein. Because we're going to talk about Donald Trump and his dictator comments after this. Take a look. This is telling the truth. He's made it very clear. There's no mystery to what he wants to do. He's told us what he will do. People who say, well, if he's elected, it's not that dangerous because we have all of these checks and balances, don't fully understand the extent to which the Republicans in Congress today um, have been co-opted. The future of the Republican Party, I mean, it depends on whether Donald Trump gets elected president again. If Donald Trump gets elected president, uh, I mean, the party is Donald Trump. It's uh, in every respect uh, uh, a, a reflection of his character. The Republican Party of today has made a choice, and they haven't chosen the Constitution. And the fact of the matter is, he is unfit to be president. He is not the lesser of two evils. He is a completely unfit man for office. He's already shown us what he would do, and he can never be near the Oval Office again. And that's why failing to speak out against him making excuses for him, pretending that somehow he's a victim, empowers him. You want to know why those poll numbers are where they are? Because folks like these three guys on the stage make it seem like his conduct is acceptable. Donald Trump's conduct 
on January 6th was a supreme violation of his oath of office and a complete dereliction of his duty to our nation. His conduct is unacceptable, he's unfit, and be careful of what you're gonna get. If you ever got another Donald Trump term, he's letting you know, I, I am, am your, your retribution. retribution. He will only be his own retribution. He doesn't care for the American people. It's Donald Trump first. Uh, that there you have it. I mean, it's that's the truth, and that's where we are. Um, we need to see if we can get Kinzinger on the show. He's got a book out yeah, too. Called I Renegade. had him on my pod the other day, and he was so good. Yeah, uh, you know. Tara, it, 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 there were people, and I, I said this on the video I recorded today, um, there were people who were unhappy with me doing it. They're like, why are you saying anything good about this? I want every hand on the oars Correct. as we get into this battle, folks. Yes. And if you come in late at the last minute and say, I've seen the light, but, I'm, but, uh, but I found the true faith once again, then jump in the boat and help us win. Yes. And, and, and I hope Paul continues that. I hope he'll speak out in Wisconsin, a state where he still has good numbers. Yeah. Not just among Republicans. Republicans are not as good as they used to be, but he still has good numbers. I hope he'll speak out. And, and look, I hope that that all of them will do the hardest last level thing and say, we're voting for Joe Biden. Yeah. Because I don't think there's any expectation in my mind that Donald Trump will get any better as we go forward this year. I don't think there's like a better iteration of Trump waiting in the wings right now. No, there's not. And there's not a better iteration of Republicans in Congress either. Correct. Evidenced by this week where they the, the, the clown show was in was, you know, turned all the way up with this Hunter Biden nonsense and with this impeachment of Joe Biden. Like, first of all, I just want to say for the record, we called this two years ago. Two when years he ago, said that if the Republicans take over the House, the first thing yep. they're going to do is try sure to impeach so. Joe Biden. They were able to hold on. The Democrats held on to the House in 2020, but in 2022, they lost the House. And what was the first thing that Republicans did? Stupid Marjorie Taylor Greene went and introduced articles of impeachment against Biden. Well, everybody kind of ignored her, right? And they're just like, yeah, okay, whatever. And part of the deal that that Kevin McCarthy made to keep himself, the, you know, from getting kicked out initially, was right. that he would he would take this seriously to placate the magus. Well, once you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile, which is what they did. And it kept getting the drumbeat of when are we going to do an impeachment inquiry? When are we going to do yep. it? And then he's and then Kim McCarthy comes out in the fall and and says that nonsense about oh we're going to you know move forward with that and blah blah blah, knowing there's no evidence, knowing it's all completely made up. Um, and he gets himself kicked out anyway. But guess what happens? Mike Johnson comes in, who's a super ultra MAGA, and he has now given in. He's acquiesced to the MAGA crazies. And they took a freaking vote to impeach Joe Biden based on nothing this week. Zero. Nothing. There is literally, they, they've literally said it. Yeah. We don't have any evidence. We're looking for the evidence. So we're going right. to impeach him to find the evidence. What is that? That is not what it's when it's for. Look, this the and I, I did a rant today. I don't know if it's been released yet on my uh, video rant for my podcast, um, where I spent basically eleven minutes straight to camera breaking this down. Mm -hmm. Impeachment is for high crimes and misdemeanors committed while holding the office of president or vice president. Mm -hmm. The allegation that Joe Biden somehow profited from Hunter's businesses while he was a private citizen is thin to begin with. But that allegation rests, again, on the phrase private citizen. What you're doing is saying that we're going to make something up, hope something sticks, hope somebody screws up something, um, and we're able to somehow spend a year having a fake show trial of Joe Biden. Yeah. It is especially, by the way, for the bogus problem solver caucus, the Biden 18. The Who soft all voted for it, by the way. No, all the normie the Republicans that they claim, these moderates, they don't right. exist, okay? They yes. all voted for this it's bullshit. It's garbage. Mm -hmm. It's garbage. Um, every one of them. Every yes. one of them. My Even day, 
Even yeah, Ken Buck. All of them. Even Ken Buck, who was the one yeah, even who Ken was Buck. loudest, that was like, you know, this impeachment stuff is nonsense, blah, blah, blah. Don Bacon, these people who were like, yeah, there's no evidence, blah, blah, blah. But they still fucking voted for it. So, yeah. there's, I mean. There's no evidence of this, so we're going to vote for it. Is, in my mind, absolutely, like, Spanish Inquisition level bullshit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they need to pay a price for this. They really do. Because all of this has been about exploiting Hunter Biden. And Hunter Biden's addiction and his transgressions yep. and the mistakes that he has made yep. that he's paying a price for. Let's not forget he has been indicted not once but twice by the Biden Justice Department people. Okay, if they've been Biden weaponized, Department. they're doing a terrible job. Right, right, exactly. So you know this. It, it did you see Hunter Biden up on Capitol Hill? Laid the wood to these fuckers. It I was mean, fabulous. just took it to them. Fabulous, because he has been dragged by Republicans for years yep. now, for years. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene showed naked photos of him during one of his cracks, you know, smoking sprees and stuff. And these are this is not news. Like people know that Hunter Biden had a substance abuse addiction problem right. and was working through it. OK, and I just and, you know, the Look, only he came thing out Biden, owned it, Tara. He, he, he had more guts yesterday. The yes. 99% of Americans will ever be called on to display in a public setting. He yes. came out and said, I was a junkie, an yes. addict. I destroyed yes. my life. I harmed my family. I blew through my money. My right. parents had to save me. Yes. And guess what? Uh, God forbid that should happen to anybody in this world. I I, I would hate that thought for anybody. Look, but, million, millions of families across this country have, That's correct, have experienced millions of people right? know the pain millions a hundred thousand plus have lost family members to opioid addiction okay yeah. a year in this country maybe more and for the republicans to exploit this is disgusting i said as much yesterday on msnbc i was really annoyed about this um because i i just feel as though the the the, the depths of depravity and immorality demonstrated by the Republican Party by doing this is just so distasteful and no, it, it, it is and it on is brand, really beyond, unfortunately. It, it is really beyond the, a, a level of depravity that that you want you want to believe in your heart that that we're better people as a society than to listen to that crap. But there well, are millions of Americans today who are retweeting things about Hunter. And look, the dirty little secret here that we all know is. They're going to use this thing for a year yeah. to do dick pics from Hunter's laptop. Right. Now, I'm sure Jim Comer and Jim Jordan have spent a lot of time in private carefully examining every oh, single one of those dick pics in private. Well, very, very before. carefully looking at them many, many times to make sure they're not yeah. missing some key piece of evidence. Oh, God. You know, but these the, the one benefit here, Tara, is that Jim Comer has the mental acuity of, oh, of, of a concrete block. This guy. This is a guy who is not smart. He is no. not clever. No. He's not good on camera. No. His staff clearly were people that he didn't want to feel intellectually threatened by. Yeah. These are not smart guys. No, they're so not. They continue to do things like, we found a car payment Joe Biden made to Hunter. It's evidence of corruption. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What? It's not. It's, it's, it's not. Everything that they've claimed. And then they're just flat out lying about oh, what yeah. evidence they claim they have. Uh, another point that I made on MSNBC yesterday was that this is just an extension of the MP of the um, 2019 extortion plot that Trump attempted with yep. Ukraine and Vladimir Zelensky, yep. fine dirt on Joe Biden. And they were trying and all of that stuff was debunked, like all of that stuff nonsense was debunked. And they're repeating the same lies over again. They're just doing Trump's bidding. You want to talk By about the way, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but but. Republicans, just just bear in mind that the, the the worm always turns, the cycle always continues. And let's say you get your fondest wish and Donald Trump's reelected president. If there's a Democratic Congress, you can bet you and Jared are getting the anal exam of all time oh, yeah. over the $2 billion from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I, that's just one of many transactions. Well, oh, yeah. I just don't just understand. one layer of it. Which I just don't understand why uh, others should are, are not out there 
pointing these things out more. But I want to show the clip of Hunter because I think it's important yeah. for people to see. It's about time that yeah, they yeah, got on really, offense. It's, really it's really important for them that, to, to do this, and I'm glad because it knocked those idiots on their heels because Comer and Jim yeah. Jordan didn't know what to do because Hunter they wanted Hunter to come up and testify uh, in a deposition behind closed doors. And Hunter said, no, F you. I want to do it in public. That way they can't manipulate what he said because we know right. that they've done this before. And they were like, they're stuck now trying to turn themselves into pretzels to, to, to explain right. why they want less transparency. It's so mm -hmm. craziness. It's such craziness. So Hunter Biden was on Capitol Hill like, yeah, I'm here. And you guys don't want me to testify in public? Too bad because this is a joke. Listen to Hunter. Here's a clip. I'm here today to acknowledge that I've made mistakes in my life and wasted opportunities and privileges I was afforded. For that, I am responsible. For that, I am accountable. And for that, I am making amends. For six years, MAGA Republicans, including members of the House committees who are in a closed door session, session right now, have impugned my character, invaded my privacy, attacked my wife, my children, my family and my friends. They've ridiculed my struggle with addiction. They've belittled my recovery. And they have tried to dehumanize me, all to embarrass and damage my father. There's no evidence to support the allegations that my father was financially involved in my business because it did not happen. No matter how many times it is debunked, they continue to insist that my father's support of Ukraine against Russia is the result of a non-existent bribe. They displayed naked photos of me during an oversight hearing. And they have taken the light of my dad's love, the light of my dad's love for me and presented it as darkness. I am here to testify at a public hearing today to answer any of the committee's legitimate questions. Republicans do not want an open process where Americans can see their tactics, expose their baseless inquiry, or hear what I have to say. What are they afraid of? I'm here, I'm ready. Good for him. Yeah, Good for him, you know, also, go ahead, Tara. There, there, there. This reminds me of something that went up in 2020. There was a very heartfelt picture of Joe Biden giving Hunter a hug and kissing him on the cheek. Mm -hmm. And one of the worst people in MAGA world, one of the shittiest, lowest people in MAGA world, who is now a big DeSantis supporter, um, said, oh, it's obvious Joe Biden's molesting his son. I just can't with these people. And and this guy's a former New York cop. He thinks of himself as a real tough guy. Um, he thinks of himself as a real badass. And all I could think of was, what a broken piece of shit you are. Yeah. And that's the thing here with, with a lot of these Republicans is they're willing to, for Donald Trump, by the way, they're not doing this for any other reason. They're doing it because Trump said they must. Right. For Donald Trump, they're willing to go through a show trial. They're willing to embarrass themselves. They're going to cost many of them the seats that, they, that they're clinging to in Congress. We hope they're so. They're going to cost the Republicans the majority. Good. And, and I am here for it. Mm -hmm. But this darkness, this darkness around the Republicans where every, every single thing isn't, it, it isn't like a, the natural instinct of a parent to help their child. It's right. corruption. Yeah. It, isn't, it isn't giving your, your son a hug after he's recovered from addiction. It's it's Joe Biden's a pedophile. Get the fuck out of here. And yet, how many of those bastards are pedophiles are or are engaged in yeah. sexual depravity and all kinds of weird shit and cheating on their wives or threesomes or whatever the hell they're doing behind closed doors? You know, well, down I mean, in Florida, the chairman of the Republican Party is example. being protected by Donald Trump even, and he's being advised by Steve Bannon and Corey Lewandowski, protected by Donald Trump. Because he's under he and his wife, a founder of Moms for Liberty, were in a three-way with a woman that the Republican Party chairman of Florida went to this woman's apartment on tape 
then taped himself having sex with her. He's under police investigation against her will, against her will. Sexual battery, right. and he's fine in the Republican right. Party. That's fine. That's, right. yeah. That's fine. Or however many were have been convicted of uh, child pornography. Uh, you know, all kinds of all kinds of just just Google it. There's been a bunch yeah. of them. There, you know, from Jerry Falwell, not the child pornography thing. I'm talking about sexual deviance. Um, but it's it's just the projection, right? Yep. It's projection. And this is all cascading down from the head because Trump himself is a philanderer. He's been accused of sexual assault. He's been convicted of, uh, you know, civilly. He's of been this. adjudicated Eugene to Carroll. be a rapist. That's right. E. Jean Carroll, you know, I mean, and, and the grab him by the puss, all of it. This is all now part of who the Republican Party is and what they accept. That's and, right. And all of this projection is disgusting. And the only thing that Joe Biden is guilty of is being a loving, supportive father of his son, who has gone through incredible tragedy, both of them, incredible trauma and loss in their lives. And, you know, I, I think it's absolutely a shame that the Republicans are doing this. And I think it's going to backfire. I think the good and decent too. American people who are out there are looking at this going, Can't give it a rest, okay? Stop this. Stop I, this. I, I, I interviewed the, back here, no uh, the impeachment expert this morning, and he said there, the, the, the degree of no there being there in this is unimaginable. They're yeah. going to, it is going to embarrass them at a level that, uh, I, I mean, we were talking about this morning. He kept going back to it. He kept, there is literally no basis for the charge. None. There is no evidence None. to bring a charge. There is no procedure by which they could find evidence that would lead to a charge. It's all a distraction from the fact that Donald Trump himself is under real criminal indictment, 91 counts. He's yes. got multiple trials going at the same time for breaking the law. OK, from national security to overturning the election to everything else in between. All right. That's all this is about. That's all yep. this is about. And I and I'm, you know, we'll make sure that people don't get distracted by that and that we keep I explaining to people and pointing out that that's nonsense over there. And this is what Trump is doing. And this is real and tangible and, w and why he never needs to see the Oval Office again, which is right. which leads me to his latest. So. We've been saying this, right? We're not the only ones. Historians and others have been looking at this and going, Trump is really becoming more emboldened with this authoritarian stuff. He's, oh. an, illib he's an illiberal populist. He's a wannabe authoritarian. And he was kind of, you know, over the years saying it dog whistly. Not anymore. He was literally asked by Sean Hannity at a town hall because the more that he has said these things, weird things, quoting, you know, Hitler things and stuff like that, the more people have been saying the guy is making like saying authoritarian things here. It's become such a problem that his own campaign is like, we need to tamp this down. Okay. Right. No. What does Donald Trump do? No, no, no. He turns right around and doubles down on it because that's what he does. And he says, no, I don't want to be a dictator just for one day, just for one day. Really? Sure, you know where this ends, right? <laughs> this ends where he's going to yell out, he needs a final solution against the libtards right. and, and living space. I mean, yeah. it's, it will yeah. not stop. He, no. Once he's off the chain on something, it keeps going. It does. And there is no, I'm just a dictator for a day. Where do they do that at? Okay? It's never one day. You don't get to be a dictator for one day. No. And you don't joke about that when you're running for president of the United States. That's not even funny. Okay? You don't do this. And... As we have, you know, he's been doing this more and more. He's been, you know, acting even more strangely. He doesn't look great. And we've noticed this. And of course, Lincoln Project, doing our, our classic audience of one tactic, um, targeted him with this ad because we know it drives him crazy. And guess what? After he saw it, he mentioned us at that same town hall, as well as at a rally, because he can't quit us, because we know how to get under his skin. So what was the ad that got him all hot and bothered and pissed off at us again? It's called Feeble. Feeble. Check it out. Hey, Donald. We noticed something. More and more people are saying it. You're weak. You seem unsteady. You need help getting around. And wow. And an ominous, really an, an ominous country and you deserve. Are you sure you don't have dementia? It runs in the family. 
Have you had a real doctor check you out? You keep confusing things. And we did with Obama. We won an election. Getting the facts wrong. We just left pleasure. Paradise. Paradise. People laugh about it. About you. Bing, bing. Even your own people behind your back. You're winning the primary, but losing your power, your strength, your manhood. <sighs> Face it, Donald. You're just projecting when you call Joe Biden old. He's stronger than you, fitter than you, smarter than you, a better man and a better president. Anyone can see it. And when you lay there at night, alone, you know we're right. You're falling apart, Donald, breaking down right in front of our eyes. God bless the United States. (laughs) So good. So good, Rick. Of course, Trump accused us of using AI to do that ad. Folks, every single one of those clips is un- altered by AI or CGI. They are real clips of Donald Trump being a doddering old man. He did this on his Truth Social. He right. it was like 11 o'clock at night. We happened to be, you know, because we don't sleep around here. We saw it. Our press secretary saw it and put it in our chat. We were like, holy shit, he did it again. <laughs> um, do we have the screenshot? Well, Okay, that's okay. So we no, don't worry like, about it. Everyone, that's okay. So everyone was scrambling around, and you know, and then our our rapid response team put up the <laughs> put up the this this really funny response. Like it's eleven o'clock at night. What's Donald Trump doing? Just leave me alone. It was pretty funny because it's probably what happened. Um, but yeah, he was, he didn't like that. And, uh, but it got a huge, I mean, I think it got over a million views. It was huge, huge, huge. I, I and, close um, to the two, I think. Is it up there at that point now? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that we do. And we know that it gets under his skin and it worked. And folks, <laughs> and he, spent, he spent the next day, we know this from, for reasons. He mm-hmm. spent the next day down at Mar a Lago screaming at his campaign manager, at his communications director, and everybody else, like, how do you stop these asshole? You don't. Donald. You don't. You, you don't. don't. We stop you, motherfucker. Yeah. That's what happens. How about that? Unkillable. <laughs> That's right. Um, so while we're doing that, and while Joe Biden's being president and presidenting and uh, trying to negotiate a deal to get like Ukraine and Israeli funding and a deal on immigration, and he's working on foreign policy. What's Donald Trump doing? He's back out there. <laughs> Rick, I, I just don't I just don't understand how anyone looks at this guy and takes him seriously. Promoting digital NFT cards. He's done this before. And they talk about grift. This is what it's always been about for this guy. Always. He's out here, always. He's out here tw- putting out these videos about these digital cards of him which I just don't get. The whole thing is very weird to me. It's just weird. For it's $99. Like weird, like AI's porn genre, I don't understand. Right. Again, he accuses us of AI, and yet they use AI to make him look like some superhero or like Rambo and like all these really sick, weird, fetishy things. It's just so it's, bizarre. It's so bizarre. He's selling them for $99, and there's a bonus. You ready for this? If you buy the whole set, you get a piece of the suit that he wore for his first mugshot. They cut up the suit, allegedly, I don't know if this is real or not, but this is what he's claiming. You get a piece, not the suit itself, a snipped off piece of the suit he wore in the mugshot. What is you wrong know, Tara, with I am, I am One of my part-time hobbies is of course studying cults. Um, yeah. There was a, a cult in Japan called Om Shinrikyo back in the 1990s. Say that three times. They uh, did a sarin gas attack on the Tokyo subway system to bring about the apocalypse. That. Did not work out. I remember. But their leader was a guy named Shoko Ashihara. And Shoko Ashihara, to fund the cult, sold his urine to the cult followers. Jeez. And he sold his bath water to his cult followers, his used bath water to the cult followers and called it Miracle Pond. Don't give Trump uh, any ideas. I know. And there is only a matter of time before Trump starts selling vials of his urine. Oh, my God. It's yeah, only a matter of time. Golden shower urine, right? The, the golden shower urine. My essence. Yes. Oh, 
Oh, God. We, we always manage to go here at least once a show. I know, because I'm 12. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to, like, regurgitate my eggnog. Um, so we had an idea, of course, because he's done this before. And shout yes. out to Kate in our, in our creative team and rapid response. She came up with this thing. So there's these things called bad cards. Now, I will admit, as a Gen Xer, I had no idea what these things were. Okay, I still don't completely understand the whole NFT thing. But I was like, what is this? She goes, oh, it's like Cards Against Humanity. I'm like, I don't know what that is either. So as oh, I were, I'm like, explain it to me like I'm a boomer, <laughs> like I'm my parents. And so she said, okay, if they're like this game, Apples to Apples, I'm like, I don't know what that is either. So then they, they showed it to me and I'm like, oh, so it's like ad libs. It's like dirty ad libs, kind of. Sort yes. of, sort, sort of. of. Kind of, right? So we have this. We there's a company that does this that they have all kinds of different ones and we've partnered with them and they've done we've Kate has spent all this time coming up with these bad cards specifically tailored for Lincoln Project that people can buy. Ours are only four ninety nine compared to ninety nine dollars for stupid Trump. Right. But Kate has a really cool promo for it and this is the first time that we're they're digital. This is all digital. They're not like actual cards. They're digital cards and. We have a promo for it that we're going to run for everyone because I think it's kind of funny and it's cool and why not? It's a fun game. Run the promo, Kate. A lot of fun together. That was a great evening. That was a fantastic evening. Some people call these cards pop art or modern art. I wish I looked as good as I do on those cards. That I can tell you. They give me muscles where, believe me, I don't have them. This is the first time that anybody's ever heard of this. So we're, we're getting, it's the preview, right. it's the soft launch. We don't, we haven't promoted it yet, but we have, a, we have that link better than trumpcards.com, which will reroute you to the site where you can get them. Um, I think they're going to be able to, I think it's live. Is it, when does it become live, Kate? It's Monday. It goes Monday, live on Monday. Monday. Yeah, yeah. So here's some examples of it. Uh, let's see. What else did Trump flush down the White House toilet? <laughs> and then you have you can pick some things. And then there's like a judge that think that says which one is the best one. You can um, this LP's Cards Against Humanity, folks. You'll get yes. it. Yes. There you go. I mean, I am I the only one that's never heard of this? I don't know. Maybe I'm just yeah. not cool. But yeah. Anyway, so that's what it is. It's cool. It looks like it's fun. I would play it. So uh, that goes live on Monday. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, so speaking of games, I just want to do a quick, a quick Nikki Haley <laughs> update and yeah, it's funny, <laughs> a devastating Rick Wilson Twitter, Twitter thread. <laughs> what does Trump think about when he's on the toilet? Yes. Because you live rent free in his head there, Wilson. Way too much. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I just want to do a quick Twitter, uh, I mean, a, uh, 2024 update because we have, Nikki Haley and and this whole this stuff going on, and then we're gonna do some Christmas stuff because it's that time of year, and we're gonna play Christmassy things. Um, so Nikki Haley this week got endorsed by Chris Sununu up there in New Hampshire. Uh, this is after the polling came out uh, that sh still shows. I mean, she's in second place in New Hampshire, I believe, but it doesn't matter because Trump is still up. Like you know. Chris Sununu's endorsement in 365 gets you the smallest thing on the menu at Starbucks. Yeah, it doesn't mean a thing. And Chris Sununu really needs to, like, take an edible and chill out. That guy is so hyper. I cannot with him. He's, like, always all over the place, like, super hyper. He's just too much. But it's not going to make a damn bit of difference, Rick. Can we please explain to people that this, this whole idea that Nikki Haley has a chance of taking Trump out in New Hampshire or Iowa, or if she wins one or the other, like somehow that makes a difference. No, I, I, have, I have run through the math on this so many times with so many people, Tara. Oh my Folks, God. Donald Trump is ahead in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. The first three big, the big three states that set the tone. Yes. By 40. Then we go to Super Tuesday. On Super Tuesday, Texas and California, where Donald Trump is ahead of Ron DeSantis by 50 in Texas, and by 55 in, he's not at 55, he's ahead 55 of DeSantis in California, where he's going to win that day on Super Tuesday in winner take all states, about 30 to 35% of the number of delegates at he least. needs to win the, the, the entire nomination. There's now, no overcoming on March 12th, that. right after that, by the way, Nikki will be out by that point because she's going to yeah. lose South Carolina. She's going to lose her own home state. By, by, by a lot. Different. Yeah. On March 12th, Trump's going to blow out 
Ron DeSantis, the, the, who will be the last surviving guy, except for dipshit Ramaswamy. Oh, um, I can't, I he's going to blow out DeSantis in Florida by 30 to 35 points, maybe oh. more. And he's going to blow out DeSantis in Ohio by 60 points. Yeah, it's a fait accompli. It's over. It's over. Yeah, and these guys are nonsense. hanging on. They're clinging to life like, well, maybe Donald Trump will get hit by a train or eaten by a wolf. Or I mean, maybe. You know, hope <laughs> is not a strategy. No. It is not. It will never no. be. No. 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 Play, and by the, play, in, play the game you're in, not the game you want to be in. It is. Thanks. Thank you, Trigvi Olson, for that. And we say it all the time here. Uh, I say it in speeches all the time. You have to play the game you're in, not the game you wish you were in or the game you used to play before. The rules are not the same. It's a different ball game here, Correct. people. And, um, you know, if you don't believe us, what's at stake is incredibly scary. And we put this ad out. It's called preview because we wanted to remind people because the media has not really been doing this yet and neither has right. the Biden campaign. They're still kind of gearing up. Um, and I, I know I did an interview today with the guardian that's going to come out the London guardian. And I said, look, because they asked me, do you have any advice for the Biden campaign? Given the poll numbers, and blah, blah, blah. I said, yes, go now. They to, right. They need to get off their asses and go full steam ahead. Like go crank now. it up to 11. Now it's like, there is no more waiting. Get it going now. Get There's it. plenty Get for it. them to do. So let's check out Preview. So we've been doing it for them. Here's Preview, our latest ad out this week. Seven years ago, Donald Trump took the presidency. Pundits, allies, and adversaries tried to believe he'd be a normal president, a normal Republican, and that the good guys would steer him right. They were wrong then. They're wrong now. His legacy was chaos, hate, violence, and corruption counted in a grim tally of deaths, half a million graves, a wrecked economy, massive spending and debt. Trump shamed us to the world, shattering alliances and fawning for every small-time dictator and full-time thug. He made America weaker, poorer, and less secure. Defeated, he drove a shameful assault on our democracy. He's back and more dangerous than before. Stop pretending that this is just a campaign, that his threats are a joke, just more locker room talk, that a Republican can beat him, or Joe Biden won't run. Wake up, grow up, get in the fight. If he wins, his plans are clear and terrifying. He's promised to take revenge on us, on the country that rejected him. It's a risk we can't take. That's why this election is about one thing. It's America or Trump. You're welcome, Dems. <laughs> You're, we're Thank here you. to help. Put off the logo on the back, run the ad. Just go. We're, we're here to help. We're here to help. We're, we're here for you. Yeah, we are. Your... Oh, my gosh. Well, on that, we want to switch gears and lighten it up a little bit because, like we said, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And every year around this time, uh, folks have gotten used to Rick and I being festive and doing Christmassy things. And, of course, we all remember Melania Trump and how much she loves Christmas. Um, and in, in honor of Melania... Uh, we're going to um, share our Christmas spirit with you. For those who don't remember, we'll refresh your memory about how much Melania Trump loves Christmas. <laughs> they say I'm, I'm complacent. I'm the same like him. I support him. I don't no. say enough. I don't do enough. No. It's, where, it's, where I am, they, I put the, I'm working like a ass my ass. I know. The Christmas stuff that, you know, who gives a f about the Christmas stuff and decoration, but I need to do it, right? Yeah, but... A hundred percent. You have and no then, choice. And okay. And then I do it. And I say that I'm working on Christmas uh, planning for the Christmas. And they said, oh, what about the children that they were separated? Give me a break. <laughs> no. Oh, that, my that piece God. of audio um, from Stephanie was truly revelatory and i don't think people understood it at the at the level right because the 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 pissing is like who gives a fuck about christmas i mean well, we do Melania. exactly in america where we've embraced you with open arms maybe not in slovenia but here in america when you're first lady people give a fuck about the christmas 
I can't not. stand her. The fact that she ever had an attitude and had the audacity to have an attitude about being first lady of the United States, like it was an inconvenience for her, make it, it grinds me so much. I cannot stand her for that. I just cannot. She's an ungrateful bitch. And I'm and I that right there shows you right there. And I just cannot. So we're not gonna let you know Melania the, 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 ruin the our Christmas ladies, spirit at all. At all. I'm first grateful. ladies of both parties have always, always made the White House a welcoming and wonderful place at Christmas, not a postmodern dystopian weirdo nightmare. Right. Which is what Melania tried to do. Like Melania did with her with exactly. her red cheese of blood or whatever the Whatever the hell that was. And um, I want to say that I'm grateful that we have Jill Biden as our first lady, who is You're a here. classy, wonderful, decent, wonderful person who loves Christmas and is an actual normal person. I mean, my goodness gracious. And it's Stephanie Winston Walkoff who who gave us that yes. um, that uh, that wonderful audio. And she's a great friend of the show. And she's beautiful, by the way. She's like model beautiful. We love and Stephanie. And a sweetheart. Amazing and a person. Sweetheart. Yes, shout out to Stephanie. And, um, a per and a person who really got who got it. She's one of those people who was inside and said, yep. oh, God, what is, what's going on here? I can't yes. be a part of this. Yes, that's right. Yep, good for her for for getting out of it and speaking up about it. 100%. So on so on that note, we're going to share our spirit of Christmas because we love Christmas here. Um, Rick, we're going to start off with with you. Let's see some of your holiday cheer in your house. All right, that's the big tree downstairs, ten feet tall. Uh, oh my my lovely and gorgeous and talented fiance Renee uh, said we're going to go at this tree, and then when we're done, it's we have to go back and do the whole thing over twice as much. And then we did some more. Oh uh, that other tree is on the landing of the stairway that leads to the upstairs library from the oh, downstairs wow. library. It looks like it's floating. Um, yeah, there you go. It's That's a lot of libraries in my house. Mm -hmm. But it's on a little, there's like a little staging the area up on the steps there. Um, that is the beautiful Willow Nativity on the in the dining room. Lovely. What else we have? Oh, that's where I'm at right now in the yes. in the main room in the living room with the fireplace with with Lincoln. Love it. That's the big balls on the front gate. We've got <laughs> wreaths and Christmas and giant jingle bells on the front gate. Yes, something that DeSantis and Trump know nothing about. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so uh, for our house, as most people know, if you've been following me for years, you know that we are over the top and turn our house into a winter wonderland. That's outside. And that's only from one side of it. There's actually more. Um, but that was the, I had to do. Of course, shout out to Christmas Vacation. Right here, <laughs> our own. We are the jolliest bunch of assholes this side of the nut house. I have a shirt that says that also. I do all the decorations. This is our sitting room. Um, anything that's uh, eye level, I do. Anything that's above me, my husband does. And I do all the floral arrangements. I love doing this. It's like, it's therapeutic for me. We have Santas, we have angels, we have things that light up. We've got the fireplace. Um, we Our tree is 12 feet this year, 12 to 13 feet. We have our picture there with the Bidens um, that we love. Uh, then we have, we do this like cr massive, massive Christmas village. My mom started this and we... It takes us a couple, about six hours to put it all together. Do we have the Christmas village? Oh, there's a leg lamp. There's Wait, leg. there was a leg lamp that is famous. I have a mini leg lamp this year for my suit, my set, because Marcel, my husband, is like, I want to put the leg lamp in the window. So for <laughs> years, I always have it on set. So this year, we've got two. Shout out to a Christmas story, which we love. Then, of course, we have our, I do, like, I started these new things where I do these crafty, like, vase things that I saw an IG influencer do. So I'm into those now. Um, we have all of those and our cute little cats. Shout out to our please don't leave classified documents in the bathroom. That was a Lincoln Project um, gear store thing that Kate and, and those folks came up with after Trump got indicted. That's in my bathroom. I also painted that picture, by the way. Um, we don't have the Christmas Village. Oh my gosh, that's the highlight. That is the highlight of our whole thing. Okay, well, we have a massive, huge Christmas village that my mom and I put together. Um, I have the videos. It's going to be posted on my Instagram and on my threads. It is like a whole thing. We've got people's on sleighs. We've got, you know, skiers. We've got ice skaters, things that move. It's amazing. And my mom and I 
do that together all the time. And every year it's a tradition and we love it. So um, we want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. If you, like I said, if you want to see the full, the, the videos of everything, follow me on my socials. It'll all be there. Uh, we also did shots at our Christmas party. Michael Steele was with me. We did our Lincoln Project. Oh, I'm sure that went well. <laughs> It was great. We had the Lincoln Project shot glasses for people who nice. were in shows with, with Trump and Mark Meadows and the face of Rudy and all of them on there. It was pretty funny. Um, and uh, Michael Steele had a great time. <laughs> he had a great Love time. Love that. Yes. He picked Sidney Powell. I picked Rudy. No one picked the Trump shot glass. Nobody wanted to put Trump that close to their mouth. It was the cursed. It sat there. We were like, that's kind of funny. It, don't say it. Don't say it, Wilson. Don't say it. Don't no, say it. Don't say it. No. I, I, say look, it. that. I teed you up. I teed you up. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to say it. Hear me. Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, on that note, um, if you guys want to send us your Christmas photos, there are pics like your pet photos or your favorite Christmas decorations. Yeah, hook us Please. up. Send it to you. We'll tweet, retweet it. Tweet them at us or on if you're on threads or Instagram, send them, send them over to us. We'd love to see them because we love Christmas around here and the holidays. So I want to take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah, yep. a Merry Last Christmas. Last night of Hanukkah coming up here. Yes. Right? A happy new year. And also, if you get a chance, if you're on Twitter, vote for the Abes. We have the Abe Awards which um, is uh, the best of our ad content this year. It's in different categories. Yep. And so you can go over there uh, on the website and vote for your favorite favorite uh, content, piece of content from us in different categories. So check out the Abe Awards. And uh, Rick, I think you and I, our episode on your podcast is out this week too, yes? It just came out today. I'm going to be putting it up online shortly. Yes, just, I saw some clips from it. Got, yeah. I so, haven't yeah. even had a chance to, to, to watch it yet, but... Um... We're going to put that out tonight. So, uh, and we had a great conversation. People are already sending me notes about it. I'm like, well, I've been doing other things. So here we are. Well, but, yes. And, but uh, just you know. a, a one, one other shout out is I want to thank uh, Michelle and Kate and Riley who are back of the house on this show. Yes. And who make it happen every single time we're here for you folks. And they are some of the hardest working people in show business and, mm -hmm. and, we're going to work him even harder next year as we come back into the campaign season, because as much fun as we had tonight, as much fun as we try to have in general, this really is about giving you and equipping you with the ability to go out and fight these fights that are ahead of us and to stay strong and courageous in the year to come. And it's an honor for us to be here with you guys every time we do this and your feedback and your support means the world to us. And we're really, really grateful, but we're especially grateful for the team here inside the breakdown um, cause they just absolutely slay every single time. Absolutely. And, uh, this is a, a women run operation and <laughs> we love it because women run the world. <laughs> hey, look, it's like me. It's like me and Christmas decoration. You know what my job is? Show up with some magnificent Christmas trees for the house. <laughs> Help do things. Other yes. than that, no I the judgment of people better at that job than I am. Well, yes. Well, at least because because you're you're um, self aware enough to know what you're not good at and what you are good at, and you and you let the women do what they're good at. Look, 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 look there's a list everything. of things I'm good at: making ads, <laughs> flying airplanes, writing right. stuff. There you Other go. Than that, I'm a danger to myself and others. Oh no! <laughs> and and hosting the breakdown here with me and your podcast. So we love you, Rick Wilson, and we want to say thank love you, you to too, everyone. Tara. Have a merry Christmas to yes. everybody out there. Yes, and thank you and for to supporting you and Marcel. And uh, thank we will you. see you guys again in the new year. We will, and thank you to everyone for supporting the Lincoln Project and everything that we do because we can't do it without your support. So we're grateful for that, and we're gearing up for 2024, where we're going to need everybody in the fight with us. And uh, coming back in 2024, we'll be going back to weekly on Thursdays, and yep. the first show will be January 4th, um, right. right before January 6th. So that's going to be a good a, a good show. So Never happy our New Year! Favorite day, no, no. Are. But an important one, Indeed. Uh, an important one nonetheless. So happy new year, everyone, and happy holidays to everyone. We'll see you in 2024. Bless Thank you. you. All.